Good morning. Thanks for tuning into the channel. Today, we're going to get started on pulling the engine out of this 91. The last video, we did the rear disc brakes. Still got a little work to do in the back with the sway bar, but that's for another project. Today, the idea is to get the hood off, the engine and transmission out, power wash under here, get it cleaned up. If you've been watching the videos up to now, I appreciate it. I appreciate a thumbs up if it's helping you out and uh, you're enjoying what you're seeing. Also, so hit the subscribe button so you can keep up with all the future videos as we are just now getting into it. But as you can see, everything I'm disconnecting, I'm labeling it. Every wire, every clip. Don't want to cut anything. Um, the cruise control, uh, because this is going to be a drive-by wire rather than a drive-by cable. Uh, I don't need the cruise control uh, unit that came on the truck. But I'm going to save it because that will work on a drive-by cable uh, application in the future. Uh, but our current uh, drive-by wire has a module, type module, that'll fit over there. And we will continue taking apart. It's not just a quick process of jank yanking the engine out. It's uh, a disassembly. I'm going to label every single thing. Everything is disconnected except for the motor mounts, the drive shaft, and cutting the exhaust. And the motor is out. A couple of small tips for pulling that engine out is one is if you'll cut the exhaust about at the end of the Y pipe and then remove the exhaust manifolds. Uh, that's what I did. I cut it at the Y pipe. I cut the crossover from, from the bottom side and then remove the exhaust manifolds. It makes pulling the engine out a whole lot easier. Also, once you've disconnected the transmission from the cross member in the back, uh, if you can support the back of the transmission and then remove that, uh, that brace that holds the back of the transmission because when you're having to tilt that engine at an angle, if you're pulling it out with the transmission, you have to get quite an angle to it to uh, pull it out through the front, clear your uh, uh, core support. It makes it a lot easier for the back of the transmission to drop down and get that angle with this hole here uh, rather than trying to maneuver it past the cross member and then up. And in my case, I didn't remove the front accessories and that would have been easier too, but I don't always do everything the easy way. Uh, I left the accessories on the front. Anyway, uh, anyway, I'd mentioned the next step was to uh, power wash it, clean it up. And I did that, so let's take a quick look. So I power washed it, it came out pretty good. Need to work on the uh, Fender well panels a little bit, uh, clean them up a little more, but the uh, firewall came out nice. Having gotten the engine and transmission out of the truck and cleaned up the engine bay, one of the next things we need to do is separate the transmission from the 4.3. We have to consider connecting it to the 5.3, and in doing so, we got to put in the clutch. So I'm going to take you over and we're going to show you what we're going to do concerning the clutch. This is a new clutch pressure plate. Clutch is on the fly, flywheel, it's laid it on there. Looks good, nice uh, mating surface. It is going to make full contact, which uh, some of the videos I've seen of other guys doing this, uh, a lot of times the clutch disc they use doesn't make full contact with the new flywheel. This certainly will. Let's hope it all fits together. Uh, the pressure plate, uh, there are two pegs on the flywheel. You can see right here, one on either side, and the little dowels, and the corresponding holes over here in the pressure plate. Uh, when I went to put it on it, it was just, the holes were just slightly small. So I'm gonna open those up just a little bit and uh, see if we can't get it to fit just right. This is all put together. The flywheel, the clutch, the pressure plate, the alignment tool, and I've got several bearings there. Uh, these bolts are for the flywheel. These are for the pressure plate and some thread locker as well. Uh, the bearings I'm not sure about. I won't know for sure what exactly is going to work and see what, uh, what bearings are gonna be necessary to make that particular five speed to this engine. Okay, I just added blue RTV silicone into the corners here. It's got a couple of screws in it couple of the bolts to kind of hold the gasket in place. And I, I liberally coated the 
seal here in oil so that it'll slide over this crank snout a little easier. There it is. I've already tightened the two lower bolts from the oil pan up into the cover to 106 inch pounds. Now I'll tighten the perimeter bolts to 22 foot pounds. Okay, all the bolts have been torqued now. Now we can install the flywheel. This is the flywheel on the motor. I haven't torqued it down yet. We've just uh, put it in place and hand tightened the bolts. We're going to torque it down in just a moment and then put the, the bushings in place. Okay, I just torqued the flywheel down. Um, in order to keep the flywheel from spinning, I put a screwdriver in this hole so that it caught the lip of the block so it wouldn't turn. And I made the first pass at 15 foot-pounds, the second pass at 37, and the fourth pass at 74. And I put a little thread locker on there to, for extra measure. And that's per the manufacturer's recommendations as well. Here are the two different pilot bearings that come with the clutch kit. The question was, which one do I use? Do I use the larger or the smaller? It's an easy way to find out, and I found a great uh, site that has that information from American Powertrain. Uh, I will post a link below in the description, and at the end of the video, I will also have uh, a cut and pasted the article, which is short, and uh, a picture of a diagram that shows the bell housing and the back of the motor that lets you know which of these bearings to use. Let's put the bearing in and I'll explain why I chose the one I did. Okay, the way to determine which bearing you need, whether it's the small or the large, it all depends on the input shaft of the transmission and how far it protrudes past the face of the transmission bell housing. The way to measure that is to put a straight edge against that, the face of the transmission like this, and measure the length of your input shaft. Now the quick and dirty method is, if it's three quarters of an inch extension or longer, then you use the smaller bearing which is farther into the crank. If you have, uh, the input shaft is shorter than three quarters of an inch, then you would use the larger bearing which mounts on the outer edge of the crank. In this case, this one extends out about third of an inch, so it's gonna use the, the larger bearing. I'll show you better on the motor. Here are the two bearings. You can see from inside here that the smaller bearing would fit into this recess and the larger bearing would fit in this outer recess. It's a little easier to see if I point it out. This inner recess is right here in the back of the crank for what we will call position A and position B is here in the outer crank. And that's where we're gonna put the larger of the two bearings. As you can see, I've already installed the flywheel. I kind of got ahead of myself and went ahead and put that in place and it's been torqued down. And uh, so we'll be installing the bearing now. And because it is a sealed bearing on both sides, it doesn't matter which way it goes in. To make it a little easier to get in, I'm putting a thin coat of oil. I just have a bottle of mobile one over there, shake it, put a little bit in the cap, put it on the end of the bearing and a little bit on the inside here, just so it's not shoving it into a dry hole. Position the bearing. Put this directly over it. It's a large socket and a dead blow hammer. And it's seated in place. Just tap it in until it's flush. Now we're gonna install the clutch plate and the pressure plate with the uh, device to center it and uh, we will attach the pressure plate with new bolts and torque to spec. Okay, the clutch disc, you don't want to touch the face of it. This is the new clutch. It's obvious which side is the front, which is the back. This part that sticks out here is the is obviously the, uh, the back side. Put the alignment tool in it and it lines up and then insert, it only goes down so far and then you position the end of this the tip of this into the pilot bearing and push the clutch up to the flywheel and in some of the this whole clutch pressure plate uh, bearing system is made for a 2001 4.8 or 6.0 
Chevrolet Silverado. So buy the kit. Don't try to piece it together. Buy the kit, the clutch kit, and then get the correct 1050 flywheel and it'll all work. If you'll recall, we had to open up a couple of the little holes on the pressure plate to fit on the pegs, the two mounting uh, pegs here on the flywheel. And just gotta find those. And remove the tool. And the clutch is installed. Okay guys, that wraps it up for today. Uh, we've gotten the engine removed from the truck. It's been cleaned up, uh, at least the first round. Do a little detailing uh, as we go. Uh, the engine and transmission have been separated. We measured the transmission uh, input shaft to determine which correct pilot bushing that we needed. And again, down below in the description, I'll have a link to the uh, website that has more details, specifics about that. At the end of the video, I've also got uh, screenshots of the same article and a diagram that shows the back of the engine, the front of the bell housing, the dimensions and all this. Uh, so what I, the information I provided in the video about the three quarter inch is my Cliff's Notes version uh, of that, but that'll give you the specifics for it. We've got the pilot bushing installed in the back of the motor, uh, installed the flywheel, clutch pressure plate, uh, they've been cleaned, all the bolts have been torqued to spec, and have thread locker on them. So, join me next time when we continue on with the truck, and thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful. Have a good day.